talking about different generations um, in the workplace. I'm not sure how to use this. Um, just push the right button to move the slide forward. Okay. See, a millennial knows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to be talking about the different generations in the workplace. I'm um, currently, there are four generations in the workplace. Um, and we're going to talk about you know, who are they, what motivates them, why are they the way they are, uh, what do we need to know about them. Um, and we're going to be doing some activities you see around the room. We're going to break up um, after I do my little presentation so that we can just get deep in the understanding of the different generations. Um, hopefully you'll walk away with some, some great tips and recommendations on um, how you work with different age groups. I do want to start off with a warning. And this is just a starting point. Um, what you're going to hear today, it, it may sound like, okay, this is so stereotypical. We're, being, you know, we're stereotyping different age groups. Now, it's just a starting point so that we can just deepen that conversation and have some real conversation about you know, what sort of characteristics and traits do each generation bring with them. Um, the reality is, is that people are influenced. Their, their values are influenced. Um, their characteristics, their traits are influenced by um, just historical context. What were some of the large events that happened during their formative years? Um, and we'll go deeper into that. But this really is, it's just a starting point, it's just a conversation, so um, don't get offended about anything you see up here. I don't think there's any offensive there anyway, so. So why is this important? You know, the more you understand about yourself, the more you understand about others, um, the better you're going to be able to communicate for yourself and to communicate with others. So this is just a way to start breaking down some of those barriers when you start talking about what are some of the differences and what, is, what are some of the similarities that we all share. We all tend to view the issues. Um, we, we tend to, our world of view really is very much shaped by um, by our own generational experiences. Um, some examples I can give are, when you think of the 1960s, what do you think of? Anti-war demonstrations. War protests. What? War protests. I mean, that, that, so that really did shape a generation. That was a time of turbulence and, and really rebelling against the, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, rebelling against the institutions that currently were there. It was just a whole different way. And it did shape how people then view their own lives and um, view the world and, and their characteristics and traits as they move forward into the workplace. What are some, I mean, there's a lot of the, there's a lot of other things that influence your characteristics and traits. So what are some of those things? Interactive? Your family, how you're raised. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the family you were raised in. Economic circumstances. Exactly. You know, um, the, as you were being raised, what was your family like? How were they rich? Were they poor? Were the, was it a blended family? Was it one family? Here's the region you grew up in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Your it could be the religion that you that you grew up in, the region you grew up in. Um, your race. Race and ethnicity, exactly. All of that is going to influence um, your worldview. It's going to influence um, your characteristics, your traits that you bring forward Gender. to the workplace. Exactly, gender. Um, so this is just one more piece that we're going to be talking about today. So this is a chart of what the workplace looks like now. There are four generations, um, traditionalists, are at that 4% up there, those, that's the older generation. We have the baby boomers, big old chunk of, of the workforce <coughs> right now. We have the generation X that came after the baby boomers, another big old chunk. 
And then now we're starting to grow the um, youngest group, the millennials, in the workplace. Take a moment, look at that. Any thoughts? I think it's expecting the millennials to actually be a bit more. Yeah. Surprised. I think it's interesting that the boomers and Generation X are exactly the same percentage. Not for long. Not for long. Other thoughts? When I saw this, I, I thought, Oh my goodness, look at all of these boomers came along and took all the good jobs and mm -hmm. all of these Gen Xers are like, when are you going to get out of the way? <laughs> yeah, it almost kind of looks like each group is slowly pushing its way forward the way that this, you know, the traditionalists are slowly edging out. Recently there's going to be like a 1% margin there and we'll be able to see it. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting chart. So we have another chart that kind of shows how times are changing and the different how the workforce um, makeup is changing over time. And we're even, looks like there's they identified the Gen 2020 group <laughs> that's going to be coming in. But you'll see that traditionalists are in yellow. You know, as time goes by, they're really uh, moving out of the workforce. In 2020, there's still going to be some in the workforce. It's like, why are you still working? <laughs> uh, but then you'll even see like the baby boomers, the green. It, it, as time goes on, the baby boomers are, are getting less. It looks like the uh, millennials are starting to grow. Any thoughts on this chart? I can't believe there's so many traditionalists in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it would, for me, be helpful to know kind of what the years are there. Because to yeah. me, it's surprising that Gen X, I mean, in a way, it's not surprising we say the same because we're going to be in the workforce the whole time. But I guess what's surprising to me is how many more millennials <laughs> there are going to be from Gen Xers in the workforce. Um, because I guess I would have thought, of, you know, as more millennials came, they would like end up being around the same amount of people. Mm -hmm. um, and big, big group. Yeah, I didn't know that there were that many. I think they're all sitting on their parents' couches, right? Yes. Now. <laughs> well, and if you broke it down by career, I'd like to know how many of the millennials are actually in like serving a high capacity certain criteria, educational training, if we keep hearing that the number of jobs that are going to require high skills, we're not going to go meet that gap because millennials and the younger generation are not as educated as the baby boomers and the Gen X. How does this compare to the last chart where you had 40% boomers and 40 Gen X, and here I see the highest Gen X number at around 22%. You win a prize because I noticed that right before I came over here today. <laughs> I'm like, these two charts. I mean, even in 2000, they, do you have different other. dates to find or what? I mean, 2013. Because no, but even back in 2005, they're showing that millennials oh, are. outnumber Gen X. So then, what I would suggest is that perhaps you just look at the fact that shifts and changes are occurring and don't worry too much about the percentages. <laughs> Probably different sources, right? Bureau of Labor Statistics and yeah. who was the. That's why I'm asking how they define the generations. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the generations, they switch years just by a little bit, so. But you wanted to hear about the different, um, and, and these are defined slightly different depending on which study you're looking at or who's, um, who's sharing the information, but this is what we landed on. Traditionalists, those are the ones who were born 1945 or before. This is the group that's hard working, loyal, They're, they want to leave a legacy, they're fiscally conservative, they have strong faith in the institutions, they respect authority. Overall, not every not one person is ever going to have all of the characteristics or traits of their um, given generation. Baby boomers, we're looking at 46 to 64, that's you know, 18 years, that's a pretty long time span. And if you think about the 40s, 50s, and 60s, a lot changed during the time frame as well. So this is a group that's competitive, they question authority, they want to put their own stamp on, on their work. This is the sandwich um, generation, yet they still are optimistic. Um, generation Xers, these are the ones that also, keep in mind, baby boomers, traditionalists are the parents of the baby boomers for the most part. Baby boomers are the parents of the Gen Xers. The baby boomers were really getting into the workforce. That's when 
um, both parents were working and everything, so they were the Gen Xers who were like kind of the latchkey kids. These are the ones that are they're resourceful, self-reliant, they're a bit skeptical of, of institutions, very adaptive, independent, creative, risk takers. These are the parents of the millennials. So the Gen Xs, they grew up with their parents, uh, you know, being told for them working for the most part, left uh, left key kids, they ended up becoming those helicopter parents, the ones that were so engaged and involved with everything that their kids were doing, you know, their, their after school activities, you name it. Um, so the millennials, they're the ones that are much more globally minded, much more technology literate, multitaskers, they have a very can-do attitude. They have a can-do attitude because they've received a lot of praise. Everything. This is the generation that, if you were on a team, everyone got an award at the end. <laughs> when I when I did this talk several years ago, someone in the audience shared that he was the water boy and he got he got a trophy along with the rest of the team. <laughs> 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 Uh, so they're collaborative and a sense of entitlement. Once again, just generic overviews of the different age groups. So here you start to see um, the different age groups again. So Clint Eastwood is a traditionalist. Um, but you see that there are some defining events that took place that really did make a difference in their lives. Um, one of the things I was thinking about, when it says here, the New Deal, it made me think of um, FDR. He was president for 16 years, and none of us have ever experienced that. Someone four terms as president. Can you imagine the trust you must have had in this one person? <laughs> um, and then the different events that came out war, um, the sexual revolution, and just rejecting all those traditional values. And then you move over to the Gen Xers where I remember, you know, over here it's like if you grew up you had three channels on TV. <laughs> over here, if you're starting to have personal computers in the house. Um, the Cold War ends, the Berlin Wall comes down. Divorce, people who grew up over here, divorce was their parents for the most part were married and stayed married the whole time baby boomers started divorcing, so they're used to that. Um, over here we have the internet, the Great Recession, the War of Terror. I was thinking about that too. I mean, what your the Cold War goes away, you're no longer afraid they're going to drop a bomb, and, and then it just changes to any event, any activity could be somewhat dangerous, you know? So when you look at this, what jumps out at you? I think when you start with a traditional, it's like family and church as far as major influences, and then just the impact of media. Right. Right. And over here, I would even say social media probably mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. huge. Education was huge for this group. It really was. There was an expectation to be educated. Um, you get over here, and you get over here, and it's like it's starting to become way too expensive. We work on an education, but that becomes an issue now. So we're going to go through each and every one of these boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to share just a few things, like communication styles and how the changes, you know, you can see the different changes, or how this would shape a given generation. Communication style being in person, then moving to the telephone, then moving to cell phone, to email, then moving to instant messaging, text messaging. I still remember when I got my first text message. I picked it up about a week after it was sent to me. <laughs> 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 I was like, what is that little run up there be? <laughs> How do I do this? Um, career goals, since we're talking about the workplace. So what, what were the career goals of these different um, age groups? Building a legacy, a lifetime career with one company. That was that was the norm back then. You sign on and, and you and either you're with that one company or you're still in the same field for your whole career. Then the boomers were just 
really wanted to change how they did business, but they really wanted to build that perfect career. They wanted to excel at it. They worked long hours. Then the Gen Xers, they're looking at <coughs> building their um, building their skill sets. They want to be able to be, have transferable skill sets. And then you, you get here to the millennials, and they're building parallel careers all at once. Um, they have more than one job at once. I was sharing um, earlier that we rent a room out to a young man, 27 years old. This is him. He, he's, um, he's on channel three as Chef Gabe um, a couple times a week. He has his own catering business. He's, he does a lot of marketing, you name it. He's doing a bunch of different things. Um, so think about that, and think about how that then translates to how do you interact with someone from a different generation in the workplace. A lot more loyalty, and as it starts moving this way, probably less loyalty to the institution, to the workplace, and probably more loyalty to the cause, to the mission, to the individuals at the workplace. So other things that jump out of here. I, I can totally see the communication styles um, in my office, for sure. Um, people stopping by rather than just telephoning. And me, I feel like I'll send an email about something rather than walking steps to <laughs> talk to someone. I just think motivators is a really big one, like especially when it comes to the workforce. And if you have um, different generations that you're uh, in charge of, what's going to motivate them to work harder, to work better? It's some of these things I think really would help, you know. And like you said, transitioning from loyalty to institution versus still having loyalty to maybe the cause, but the, you know, Xers and Millennials are like, well, you know, if I'm not getting what I need here, I'm going to somewhere else. Charlie, I have one. This is a little bit more personal one. Um, I'm a boomer. Yeah. But when I look at these, a lot of these in there, just look at the different individual ones, I've got some of each one of those. I'm not one, I'm not just a boomer. Uh -huh. I have characteristics of a number of different ones of these. And, and that is true. That really is true. And so once again, that comes back kind of to the stereotype piece, is that you're probably, as a large group, when you look as a sociologist, looking at the whole group, you can come away with some information on that, and that's what they're, we're sharing here. But I'm kind of this way, too, in that I wanted to really build some sort of a good career. And I'd say over the last five years or so, I'm struggling to figure out um, how do I maintain that balance? I, that balance is important to me, and it's driving me nuts not to have it. You know? <laughs> so, so I'm not necessarily happy being over here excelling at all times. I'm glad I do it, but I want to be able to see my family, have some fun, have some no time. <laughs> Um, however, with this group, they're more likely to verbalize it to a supervisor. And I just spoke with someone this morning who said that. That's a, a young woman came into his office, and this group really likes having older um, individuals mentor them so that they can build those skill sets. But they won't get, they're not happy, they'll tell you. They're not happy. No, I'm not really happy here, and I think I'm going to leave. You know, it's, it's not as important overall. And I think maybe this goes to the Gen X or me, but you know when it talks about security and and I was like, well, of course, because you know you can't rely on the company to take care of you, which goes back to the trust issue yeah. that Gen Xers have. But I think for at least me, it hasn't always been about just about being happy, but it's like I have to take care of myself. Maybe that's a Gen X thing. So the moving companies isn't so much about not being loyal, but it's about well, if I want to have enough money for retirement, I'm going to need a raise. And uh -huh. Raise and sign up jobs, and it's so it's not 
not about being loyal and it's not just about happiness, it's about that security and taking care of yourself. And maybe that's because parents got divorced and everything else, I don't know. Well, I think that the millennials take advantage of that, which is why they can stay so focused on if I'm not happy, I'll leave because the Gen X generation, which I'm a part of, is there to protect and, all right, come move back home for a little bit, put back on your feet, you know, because yeah. security is an issue. I, I think I read a story recently about a helicopter mom that was like banned from the college. She was too helicopter, too engaged, and really didn't want to let go of her daughter's decisions on anything. And she was banned from being able to go off to the college crowd that her daughter was banned. <laughs> Kelly knows about that. <laughs> so we're going to go through each one of these. We're going to do it relatively quickly so that we'll have enough time for the activity afterwards. But what you're really going to see here are the different um, traits and uh, the different um, generations and also what's a, a good thing for you to be looking at when they're in the workplace, what are some of the um, roles they can play. So we're starting with the traditional traditional lists. Um, they show respect for history and legacy. Um, like we said, a lot of them when they began their work lives, they, they began and they planned on staying within that either same company or the same field. For them, change is more about evolution, not revolution. Um, changing too quickly is not necessarily something that they're fond of. But this is a group that has a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and as you'll see later with the other groups, the other groups, um, especially millennials, really are looking for mentors as well, and the Gen Xs. So this is a group that, that really could pass on their knowledge. Um, my father-in-law is he's 73 years old, and he's still working. You know, He retired while he was in his 40s. He didn't like it, so he doesn't plan on ever retiring again. That guy knows so much about his business um, that I think probably don't want him to leave. But, but is that experience, is that knowledge so relevant always for what where we are today and this pace of things today and how things fast things are changing? Is it still relevant for I, as I a traditional? I think it depends. I'm going to say it depends because my father in law's example is in insurance. And he was really good at relationship building, has a lot of big accounts because of that, and is still out there producing greatly. So I would say yes, he has a lot of relevant information to share with them. It all depends on the old mm -hmm. yeah. I think I love the ability for somebody to remind me of um, some traditional tasks that can be helpful, like slow down, remember that sometimes um, maybe emailing something isn't the best way or trying, I, we try to be very, you know, uh, green, but every now and again, maybe you're going to do a better job if you print something out and you really are able to look at it. So I still appreciate sometimes somebody slowing me down and saying, well, let's, let's backtrack and remember some of the things that used to work very well that still could work. And what I kind of noticed too is that there almost some, seem to be coming uh, back in almost like a full circle in some of the traits that are in millennials that were in traditionalists to uh, yeah, loyalty piece. So we're, uh, with baby boomers, you know, this group really does like knowing that they've done great work. They like it better when you acknowledge that they've done great work and give them a pat on the back. Um, However, this is the sandwich generation, and so this is a group that has works very hard, but also has um, children and or grandchildren and older parents, um, and so burnout is a real possibility, so they have to watch out for that. Just because they have made it to where they've made it now doesn't mean that they don't want to have continual learning opportunities. Um, delegating. You really need to encourage the baby boomers to delegate. And honestly, my boss had to do that to me. I'm like, I'm just so busy. I'm so, well, what can you give to someone else? And it was hard to do. It was hard to do. Who else is a boomer? Have you found it ever hard to like give up something to someone else to do? <laughs> I'd say when I was younger, but less so, less so now. 
Less so now. Once you start getting used to delegated, it's like, oh, that's a smart thing to do. But <laughs> you just have such ownership of it, or at least I do. I have some, you know, such I have ownership. I'm going to share this story because yeah. uh, Maria and I work together, and um, Maria has been in her role for a long time and is very knowledgeable. She manages the APS volunteer program. Um, and me and my coworkers were millennials. Uh, came in and we support Maria. And Maria, having done such a great job, was very kind of reluctant to give up a lot of the tasks. So we literally have to tell her, Maria, give me that task that I can help you with. And please, this is my job. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to burn you. You guys are going to be like, this is what we do. <laughs> and so we're always kind of going back and forth. And I think now that she has started to give us those tasks. It is becoming easier, easier. Yeah. and so she'll, she'll say, she'll apologize, and she'll say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to send you right now, and she'll, you know, send it over. So she's getting, she's getting there. <laughs> but it is, I think it's you used a good word, though, it's ownership, mm -hmm. you know, that, and it's not that I don't think anybody else can do a great job, because I have a great team, they do a great yeah. job, but it's just, you're given a job to do, and you do it. So, I, yeah. I feel like I've created a lot of things. Yeah. my work, you know, created a lot of great products that they're using, and I don't necessarily want to just hand them off. <laughs> At times I have to, but I, it, it is, it's that ownership. So we move on to Gen Xers. <coughs> so this is a, a generation that's more focused on career security. Um, it really isn't about it isn't about that one good job, but it's about having the skill sets necessary to have a career path moving forward. Um, once again, you know, I'm going to say that this is going to be true for every single generation. But learning opportunity always needs to be occurring um, for all. However, um, providing that clear direction is a good thing, um, but then also then letting it go and allowing for the ownership to be transitioned on. Um, this is also a group that really is looking at that work-life balance. They saw their parents working really long hours, um, and they don't necessarily want that for themselves. This is kind of some advice given to us older generations to kind of pick up the pace for change when it's necessary, um, allow them to run with new ideas, allow this generation to run with new ideas, So let's go ahead and talk a little bit. You know, I, I kind of neglected talking about all of the different um, historical contexts, but let's talk about like the 70s and the 80s. What are some things that jumped out at you? Those are like the formative years for this group, so it's going to influence how they view the world. What are some things that jumped out at you from the 70s, from the 80s? I think of the women's movement, the 70s, women's, women's rights, Talk about high school seniors, and they say, 
you know, this is the senior class coming out, and here are all the things that um, were a part of their life, their whole lives. And I remember reading the one that said, you know, they were born into a world where age was already there, you know. And I'm like, wow, you know, because now it seems like it's so long ago, but it's like there's going to be a time when people are born into a world where, where you know, terrorism was just was no way of life. And, 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 I think um, a lot of the government, well, I know there's been government scandals throughout history, but, you know, for Gen X, there's, there's Watergate, there's Iron yeah, Contra, yeah, there's all of that, yeah. that might go to our distrust of institutions. Because <laughs> that's just like, that was just normal growing up. I mean, we were watching the Iron Contra and hearings on TV and stuff, and I didn't really know what was going on. I just think it was really and Nixon and I were not a crook, and he was. And mm -hmm. you know, but you make a wonderful point, wonderful point, um, in that, that distrust of institutions really did because what happened during their time where institutions started failing very publicly, so mm -hmm. to speak, the presidency, the IRN Contra, even big businesses, you started to find huge scandals taking place that were just then became part of, of what people spoke about and it, it really did shake a lot of the uh, beliefs of those institutions. Because I think you know a lot of those types of things probably happened before, they just weren't the media, media wasn't right. the watchdog yeah. putting it out there as much, where it was during the generation we grew up. It was also time when eyes were open to the Middle East, too. You had the oil spikes, you had the Iraq-Iran war going on, you had the hostage situation, you had high inflation when Carter was in office, and you had, right, you see, you had a lot of that world news from the Middle East coming to there. So you overlay all of that, and then you probably start to get an idea of how historical context could, could start to influence how the people interact in the workplace. Their loyalty in their in the workplace, and maybe loyalty is not the right word, but social context always plays a, a role in how different generations are going to um, interact with in the work, their characteristics, their traits. So we come from millennials. This is a very globally minded group, even more so now. I mean, even, um, I don't even think the research is, I, to me it just, it, it blows me away how like even Twitter is huge now. And, and there were revolutions where um, Twitter was the one way that the crowds communicated with one another and with the outside world as to what was happening. So I was just talking about globally minded and, and how technology can... They've always, computers have always been in their lives, have they? Is this the one generation all, that I've always been? I mean, the computers have... I would agree with that. I, I have nephews and nieces that, you know, when they were growing up, they had their little computers, and now they're, you know, teenagers with their computers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, this is a group that really wants you to help them see their career path in the organization. They like to be surrounded by bright and creative people. They're true team players. They want to absorb everything that you have to offer. But they want that flexibility um, options um, for work style, for benefits. And benefits doesn't necessarily mean that the, you know we're talking health benefits or anything like that. They, they want to be able to, maybe a benefit is that they work from 8 to 12, they take the off from 12 to 5, and they work again from 5 to 9. Because that, you know, they want that flexibility in their schedule, um, in their lives. Um, this is a group that you have to work with that help them, to help them to understand how they can make a difference. What is the mission? There's also a group that wants to um, like I said, they're hungry for knowledge, so having a mentor is a good thing. I will say something about providing feedback, though. This is also a group that received a lot of praise throughout their lives for every little accomplishment. So critical feedback may come across as harsh to them, so you have to be aware of that. <laughs> you know, like we said, the whole everyone gets a medal type of a thing. I think I saw that in a movie recently where they're playing baseball, but they're not, the kids are, but they're not keeping score. Oh, we don't keep score in this game. You know? <laughs> you know, just, just that whole mentality that everyone's a winner. 
So we're talking about historical context here. We're talking about the 90s and 2000 through 2010. What were some of the big things that jumped out at you there? Reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> the unreality, unreal reality. Well, I mean, I just remember like the real world when it first came out. And but now I look at how people are so willing to share everything about themselves and put it on you know, all these social yeah. media sites and not care who sees it in a terms of, but I think it goes back to that reality TV. And I even just seen how the real world over the years changed from being about, here's what it's like to try to get a job, and to here, I'm gonna be the first one to have sex on TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it's just like, what? <laughs> MTV too, this is when MTV launched mm -hmm. the music videos and Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that's, to me, I remember with my kids, they loved it. And to me, it was very coarse. I mean, it was, yeah, that was their norm. I mean, they, that, that was entertaining to them. I do recall actually being shocked by a few TV shows. I remember when Married with Children came out the first time I saw them. Like, you, you can't, I mean, I laughed, but you can't put that on TV. And then as you look at it now, you're like, oh, that's kind that's of lame and old. Yeah, <laughs> Um, but this is a generation, really, that that instant information, um, access to information, and the ability to communicate instantly is, has become the norm for them. And you, you see that you see that happening so often. You read about, well, so and so posted, uh, you know, they're in trouble. They're going to be fired because they posted something on their Facebook. Or they posted something here or whatever. So that really is um, that oversharing of information has. So how do you successfully manage across all of these generations? Well, you'll, if you look at the list here, you'll see that this is basically just common sense on how do you successfully manage people, period. But it really is about working one-on-one, -on -one, discuss what the expectations are, ask what the needs are and preferences are, and then be willing to offer some options that are going to meet their needs. Um, you as a supervisor, just personalize your style, be flexible. Um, I know that in my supervision style, I went through this um, financial coaching training, so now I supervise just as a coach, where I just I ask a lot of questions and don't give advice, and it's shocking how much you can, how well you can supervise by doing that. <laughs> you build on the strengths of that diverse team. I'm a strong believer in in diversity, especially in teamwork. If you have, because um, I've done all of these personality tests and everything, if you, if you have a team of where everyone's feeling, you're going to end up with a wonderful, loving product that no one even looked at all of the potential barriers or downfalls in, in moving that product out. So, so really, just look at this as just more diversity within the workplace. You need a diverse team in order to come up with the best product. Comments? Questions? 